very exciting news this week. Witness Underground is now available to watch. Patreon.com forward slash Witness Underground. Witness Underground podcast. This is the Women's History Month edition celebrating Debutante, a short film made in Ireland by Camilla Didina, also an ex-Jehovah's Witness. It just came out this year, and this whole update is all about her and this film, how important it is to support this project. I got involved early, and I think she did an incredible job, and now it's available. The amount of energy it takes to, for that process to happen is years of dedication and time and love, and she did all of that and knocked it out of the park. So without further ado, here is a half an hour deep dive into why Debutante's an amazing short film. Go check it out. Debutante is a short film, the story of Meg, a young Jehovah's Witness who's subjected to the worst of what the religion has to offer, a judicial committee. Camilla Didina is a former Jehovah's Witness film director. She's Polish, based in Dublin. She's put together a crowdfund in 2019 on Indiegogo with just a script. I got a chance to read that script. I reached out to her. This came out of nowhere. Neither of us knew each other and just were paying attention at that time. I, I just finished my crowdfund and shot my feature. She just started crowdfunding, so reached out and said, hey, I know how hard it is, let's talk. So I got a chance to read her script. I saw what she was doing on her website. She's one of the very first people that I interviewed for my project as a podcast. So Camilla and I quickly had a camaraderie and it's become something great. Like I love working with her, hearing from her. What she makes is amazing. She knocked this out of the park. I want you all to go to watch it. It's on Vimeo, on demand. Watch it anywhere. It's not for free, but you should definitely open your wallet for this one for a number of reasons. It's an ex-Jehovah's Witness story. So if you're listening to this podcast, this story is perfectly cast, written, acted, perfectly told. This is exactly how it really goes in real life, and it's shocking. It's worth it. It's 20 minutes, 18 minutes, something like that. She's doing no advertising, so I'm helping her out by doing a little bit of advertising. I want to support it. I want her to be able to make another film. They raised, I believe the target was 20,000 euros to shoot this. They got really close to that amount. And the story is kind of funny. And I mean, crazy, not funny, just like chaotic. They got the money from a number of different sources, mostly from the Indiegogo, um, an atheist group in Ireland, atheist, Ireland Atheist Association or something like that, stepped up and put some money in. Long story short, the, she got funded and I got nominated for an IFTA, the Irish Film and Television Awards. I went to a number of film festivals, won another award at a, one of the bigger festivals, I can't remember which one in the north at the moment, off the top of my head. I went to Fastnet, which, which is in southwestern Ireland in Skull. It went to Chicago Irish Film Festival, which... I got a chance to go rep the film there. She asked me and Chris Stuckman to rep represent it because him and I are both two of the six executive producers on the film, which generally means that either we were there for advice or we were helping with money or we did something to make it happen. Another person I got to meet on that is Daniel Fitzgibbon on that list. I don't know the rest of the other executive and associate producers, but they're on IMDb. I didn't really see anything that she made, really. What was on our website was more actor work. This is her directing debut, I believe, or I thought it was going to be. I know she's made stuff since this film. But it was one of those things where you get an idea out of, of someone and you you take a chance in a way. Like, everybody needs a chance at some point. And she had everything else going in the direction of professionalism and the the ambition to do a crowdfund. And I just sort of was like, you know what? This this I know exactly how hard this is. And people believed in me in this space, in the ex Jehovah's Witness community. And in general, people that I've known for my whole life were like, oh, Scott's going to really try to make something serious. Never done that before. And they still put some money up for it. And it felt amazing. So I really wanted to get, pay that forward and help her out in what way that I could. And it wasn't even that much, honestly. A lot of other people did a lot more. So she gets the money a couple months before the pandemic. So she has to cast the whole thing, get locations secured, get the crew together, get people to do favors and work on a budget that she has. She knew she could pull it off, but it's like budget pull off at tw even at $20,000 to make something serious with real actors and real equipment and real crew members. She has a blog post from early 2020 or like from probably mid or late 2020 that's just phenomenal. And I highly recommend if you're interested in this topic, to dive into what she wrote because it's incredible the amount of hurdles she had to go through that are beyond making a film. 
the pandemic, of course, we all have our own story with the pandemic. She now had like 100 different people's money and organizations money and a promise to make something. So she has to actually fulfill that. And it's the you know, fires under her ass to do that. But the global pandemic, no one can make anything. It's impossible to make a film. Like the entire industry around the planet, that was one of the industries just totally shut down. She did all of her casting over Zoom. And I'm sure you lose something. It's a very different experience than walking into a room and doing your lines and walking around the room. And also she became pregnant during this time. She did her full term of pregnancy while making this movie in this incredible chaotic world, new environment where everything's an extra added challenge. And still somehow she pulled it all the way off. Just, I was just really impressed all the way around. Even with the early rough cuts I saw, I was like, wow, like this is, you couldn't have had actors portray these scenarios more perfectly. Like people who have come from this religion or a similar one would definitely believe that they were from this religion. They're just playing the part so perfectly. This is a big win for the ex Jehovah's Witnesses and it needs to get more eyes on it and be spread around. Almost exactly one year ago, the film got nominated for the Chicago Irish Film Festival. So the Chicago Festival is in March. She couldn't make it to Chicago. Which is actually happening like this week. She wrote me and said, hey, I put the word out to you and Chris Stuckman because you're both in the States and you're both listed as executive producers on the film. And Chris said he's busy because he's having a kid or just had a kid or something like that. So are you interested in repping my film? Going to the film festival, they have a hotel, they will treat you like a god and you need to meet the people, show up for the film screening, do a Q&A and just be there as a representative of my film. Otherwise it's going to play there, but there'll be no one. And it'll just be one of those films that no one knows anything about because they have questions, but they can't be answered. I was like, yeah, I'd love to do that. Well, I just done my whole film festival run for Witness Underground documentary across all of USA. And it was an honor. I absolutely love that. And it was almost a relief to do it for something that's not mine, even though it's on the similar topic. It's sort of like, I'm a bit detached, like, oh, the director made these choices. And this is what this religion is about. And this thing really does happen. Yes. And it's actually way worse than what she's portrayed in the film. Like it's this film's only a few minutes of the interrogation, but those can go on for hours. Those kind of things. It was beautiful. And one of the coolest things about it was a couple things. Uh, I brought, I invited my friend Mitchell Van Hovel, who's been on the Venus Underground podcast with his daughter. I invited him to come help me rep it. He has no connection to this industry at all or this even practice of making films, but he really put a ton of effort into helping make my Wisconsin Film Festival experience amazing. It was a virtual only festival, but I came in anyways, and we put on our own event for it. And it was incredible. It was like the day that mask mandate was lifted. And we had this film screening event and Q&A and a lot of old friends coming together for the first time in a decade or more. He proved to be like really there for the event. And it was awesome. So I invited him to this. So him and I went and we met all these financiers and every filmmaker that came in from Ireland. There's quite a few. There's a few American Irish as well that had their films in the festival. And they were just incredible people and everyone had their own story and everyone was just coming out of the, the pandemic as well and like traveling kind of for the first time, especially internationally for many of the Irish folks that had films and directors that had films there. And we just had a complete blast. I think we saw the sunrise every single day that week for five straight days. It was exhausting, but amazing. And we're just hanging out with people on the deepest, most hardest level and just like really going for it and show up to the next day of films with glassy eyes and smile on our face because it was so good and it kept, kept on being great. So anyway, that that festival went great. The Q&A was so special. There was four other filmmakers who had their films in the same block as ours, which is interesting because there's so many films, like 100 films and like eight, you know, 15 filmmakers that showed up for to represent their films at the festival. In Parks, it's like winter in Chicago. In Parks, it's international travel and it's a lot of Irish films out of Ireland. So it's a big cost to come in, but we had, I think, four yeah, four filmmakers in person, Katie Nalex, Declan. What was so special is that they came to my film first, the lovely woman, June, who runs the thing. She's amazing. She asked me some questions first. I was very on edge emotionally because Camilla had knocked this film out of the park and I hadn't actually seen the final cut before screen the screening there, which I didn't realize was going to be true. So it was so 
hard to keep my composure and I kind of dismissed the first question is and just was short with her and then it kind of they went to the other filmmakers they had they had to say what they wanted to say about their films interact with the audience and it was beautiful and then they came back to me and asked more deeper questions about the film and the other people on stage were like Declan he's like um can I, I don't know if I, am I allowed to do this? Can I raise my, I want to have a, I have a question. <laughs> June's like, yeah, of course. Like, what's your question? You can, everyone here is free to ask questions of other filmmakers. Um, and he just dove in like, is, so that's all fabricated, right? Like none of that really happens. We're like, oh, please. Like, no, like this is exactly how it goes. And it's so much more intense than this for women. This is such a light version of what really happens. Like they ask these probing dark questions. And just the facial expression, the wows on everyone's face was amazing. That conversation, I think we went for about 30 minutes of people just asking really intense questions about the Jehovah's Witnesses, the woman's experience, and like growing up in that insular community and what it's like. And it just fostered a lot of conversation. It was really cool, really authentic and beautiful. Out of that week, and that was that was a Friday night, so it was a beautiful time slot as well. It was excellent to have that time slot. Such a... like. We got, we had a, the place was full and it was such a beautiful little screening room as well. Just, it was a whole building just for film screenings out kind of outside of town on the Milwaukee street, I think. There's this cool spot. So out of that whole experience and hanging out with all those people and getting to know everyone on this more intimate level, we got voted as the audience award, which was amazing because there's so many amazing films there from directors who've been doing this for a really long time and to be able to represent Camilla's film in a way that got that response from the audience was really special. And about, let's see, a month later, say so in March, that's early March, so April, May. In April, after she got that award, the audience award comes after the festival, she reached out to me and said, hey, I don't know how you're doing financially, but if you can afford it, I definitely can't afford to bring you, but if you can afford it, it'd be really cool to meet you in person for the first time. We just got accepted to Fastnet and we're going to be screening our film there. Fastnet was in the end of May as the last festival probably in the round of film festivals for this film. It'd be so cool if you can make it and it's going to be in this beautiful little town in southwestern coastal Ireland called Skull on these dates in late April, right? Late May. I was like, wow, okay, let me think about that. That Let me check flights. That could be really cool. Actually, it ended up being like the coolest little inception for, for having a vacation. Because I was working at this startup and it was really going well, but I was winding down on a big project. I was working at a neuroscience company called Kernel, and I was helping spearhead a new mechanical, electromechanical integration of the Generation 2 hardware. It's a wearable helmet that can read your brain waves by pumping laser light into your skull. And then these photo sensors, which are the thing our company really developed as a proprietary IP that can read the laser light at this incredibly fast data rate and track single photon movement. Anyway, that whole thing was being, we'd done a Gen 1, it worked. It was all over the world in different neuroscientist labs. Gen 2 was going to fit better, have more coverage, get better data, be faster, all these you know, upgrades. It was really fun to work on. And I, was, and I got to this point, I hadn't really taken a vacation for since 2019 till then, early 2022, mid 2022, a little, about three years, almost three years. And her inviting me to Ireland sort of got me thinking like, I should really take a break. I've been dealing with perpetual burnout for a couple of years now. And the pandemic is sort of over ish and I could make that happen. How can I make that happen? So I've looked at tickets and I'm going to Mexico for a week. I did a podcast episode there that's still not out, but it'll be coming out very soon. It's almost done. And then I went to Ireland. The coolest thing was being at Fastnet. Camilla put me in touch with some people that she knew that were going to be there. They had an extra spot. So I have a room in an Airbnb house. It's like a 20 minute walk from this little village. I get dropped off by the bus into town and I see like a few people hanging out at this, on this table outside of a restaurant bar. I walk over. I introduce myself. I didn't realize how easy it was going to be being the only American there, <laughs> but it was very easy. And I said hi to some people, and they're like, oh, where are you from? Like, oh, from the States. And some guy's like, oh, are you Scott? And I'm like, oh, wow, okay. So people are waiting for me in this town. How cool. And that was that was Daniel Fitzgibbon, who also worked on, on Debutante. So he was there early and um, knew I was going to be there because Camille had informed him. We had never met or talked before, but he was he knew I was coming. So he's like, oh, I'll give you a ride out to your spot. And um, he was so instantly we were hanging out and having a good time and spent a bunch of time together. 
Camillo had she's not coming till the day of the screening and that was I think that was Thursday so she wasn't coming till Saturday morning or midday or something her plans had changed so she since had a baby she was bringing her mom out Una O'Brien and her father and some crew were coming and friends of the film and her family are coming to, for the film so it was like a whole crew of people that worked on this film all coming out across the country to come to this event and support the film. And I wanted to make sure that everything was going as planned. And a couple of venues were like really nice screening theaters with a big screen, great sound, good seating and everything. And a couple of places were like a noisy bar with a flat screen TV and really terrible sound. And I wanted to check out the screening spot because it was one I hadn't been to in the first day. So on the second day, I went and checked it out only to see a sign on the window that said, this venue is closed for the festival, and it was the venue where the film's going to play. So I went and talked to the people who run the festival, three lovely women who have their hands full with an event like this. It's kind of chaotic. There's like seven different locations, and there's on-demand. You can like just choose any. In some of the places, you can just choose any film you want and just play them at like the second story of above a bar or something. So there's like ways to watch it, but like to have an event for a film is so important. Someone talked to them and they're like, oh, sorry, yeah, I mean, things like that happen. Like, I guess her film won't play at our festival. No big deal. Like, everyone in the video has already seen it. So I'm like, yeah, but they're coming out here to support her and they want to, like, gain audience from this as well. Is there anything that we can do? Is there any time slot for one of the nicer venues or, or even just any available venue that's ideally not a noisy bar that we can bring all the audience and... and hustle fans to come, people we've met, bring them out to see this film and support her. She's coming with her husband and it's a big deal to bring her mom out. It's like a very special event. I don't think she'd been to an in-person festival yet. So it's going to be the one time of the film's life. They're like, let's see what we can do. We'll let you know tomorrow, the day of the screening, right? So it's Saturday morning, I'm supposed to wait in here. I talked to Dennis Fitzgibbon and he's like, okay, I could say a lot of things. I'm an executive producer, but you're, you came from another continent. You have, you have like social power and clout here. You need to throw that weight around to these people. So I would, I would go back, say one more time, say your piece one more time, let them know how important it is and let them know that you're really grateful and it would mean the world to you and the whole crew and just like really, like really make them feel the Catholic guilt properly. <laughs> so, um, I did that and it actually worked. Uh, the next day, they gave us, they got me in touch with their technical person at the screening room that had an open slot around the same time that we were expecting to be at the other space. And the space was way better. It's this isolated building with like 50 seats. There's folding chairs, but you know, 50 seats in a room with quality sound and a dedicated tech person in case something went wrong. We filled that space. We hustled and we got all kinds of people we've been hanging out with that were and they're all um, on private little Facebook chats with these people now it's been a year and we're still communicating uh, I've since hung out with some of them in Dublin and like they're just wonderful people we filled this space um, Camilla got to have her Q&A with Una on stage or in front of everybody and it was just brilliant I absolutely loved it. I took about a hundred photos while I was screening I've seen the film I wanted to capture the moment for them. And I felt like, okay, I was invited to come here to enjoy and get to know everybody. But actually, in the end, I ended up being a producer properly at this festival and like made all this stuff happen or helped make all this stuff happen. Saved the day in a sense. And I had the time of my life. And I had so many late nights with so many interesting people who I never would have had an opportunity to meet otherwise. And I still am in touch with a bunch of them and um, just really grateful to have been included in the crew in such a way. So very grateful and I want you all to go see this film because it's very special. Not only just because I'm attached to it in a sense, but because it's actually, she did an incredible job. And I've met so many women who have told me about this woman's experience in going through the judicial committee, being punished for breaking the Jehovah's Witness rule and having your life turned upside down because of it. And this film captures that so perfectly. The screening of her film at Fast Night Film Festival, the full packed house, full audience, all the family, all the new friends, all the other filmmakers in Ireland that we've met who are all amazing people, 
showed up to support the screening. That was this just beautiful thing. And we all got to know each other, got to hang out for the rest of that day, got dinners and just really enjoy the festival. And then that was the closing night ceremony. So we all went to the closing night ceremony. A bunch of us sat at the same table together. Camilla, her husband, her mom, the baby, and a few other friends we'd met. Turns out that Debutante was nominated for Best Score out of hundreds of short films. Three films were nominated for Best Score, Best Music Soundtrack for the film. And that was actually a really cool thing that I got. She brought me in to get involved in on some small level, asking me for advice early on. And I love how she handled it. Ultimately, I just gave her my opinion on what she had done originally, the financial costs of licensing certain music, and her original idea for how to integrate that into the film. It was going to be very costly. And in the end, she ended up switching late in post-production to bring in a composer that she knew and built a relationship with. And this composer just knocked it out of the park. His music is amazing. And that was recognized by this very important film festival in this beautiful way. We're all, we're all sitting at this kind of gala dinner in this, it was actually really fancy and beautiful. And there's like free wine and just the place was packed. There's standing room only, like everyone at the film festival was there. And there was hundreds of films represented with cast and crew and writers. And it was just such a vibrant, fun environment and really awesome closing. And I'm sitting there while we're waiting for the nominations to be read and I get a text message. And it's from my friend, but also manager at my startup job to say half the company is laid off, furloughed as of today, nine days into my one month paid vacation. On the other side of the planet, having the time of my life to get a message like that. And I just like look around and like take in this environment. Like I have just had so much fun and had such a rewarding, beautiful experience with all these people and my vacation is no longer paid. And I don't have a job, which is kind of a big part of my identity and my lifestyle. And I'm taking my first vacation in three years of, at this company. as like a real vacation. I'd taken a few days off, of course, here and there, mostly for the film festival run. So I was like uh, working my butt off to promote the film throughout 2021. So this is just sort of like, oh, on my first vacation of unlimited vacation as part of their policy, I don't get vacation actually and now what am I going to do with the rest of my life which I know because I already know what I'm going to do I'm having the time of my life running windowsunderground.com and getting the film out so it was like obvious that okay I need to be dedicated to that this needs to finish but also like what a rug to be pulled out from underneath me in crazy the craziest moment like is debutante's name going to get announced right now and <laughs> and I'm just looking around like I my whole future is unknown as of this very moment. So it's something I don't even know if I told Camilla. I think I wrote it to her like months later because I didn't want to like, I didn't want to spoil this moment because she, there, everyone was like riveted during this moment about waiting for the announcement. And I'm just like, my mind is reeling on like, what is the next phase of my life going to be? And how am I going to afford this vacation? <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, just chill out. It's fine. Everything will work out. And you just have fun. This is, this is a, uh, an event to have a great time at and make sure everyone's having a great time and don't bring it up. So I just like kept my mouth shut, said nothing. Um, at least not that night. I said something the next day to some other people I'd been hanging out with. Like I'm in a strange mental state about this, but I'm also having a lot of fun. Let's have a drink. Um, anyway, fast night was amazing. Thanks to Camilla did enough for you know, inviting me and then end up like having such a, it was just so rewarding to like be on that level and not have friends with, a bunch of Irish filmmakers who are amazing people. Um, hi to everyone in that community. If you're listening to this, I loved hanging out in Ireland with you and just thanks for showing me around. And like, it was such a beautiful, rich Irish, uh, experience based on all of the incredible people there. Fast that. Thanks for making it all happen. You really came through for us and for her. It was such a great experience. Debutante is a short film, the story of Meg, a young Jehovah's Witness who's subjected to the worst of what the religion has to offer, a judicial committee. I've met so many women who have told me about this woman's experience going through the judicial committee, being punished. I'm just giving credence to this being a real thing. Almost every woman who I've talked to who's left this religion had this happen to them, but almost no one in the world knows what it's like. So this film captures it in this beautiful perfect real way 
and real stakes are on the table and the punishments are so harsh in this religion it's so unacceptable honestly it should be a human rights violation in my opinion and i'm not the only one who thinks that a group of people all over the world are fighting the Jehovah's Witnesses for this reason trying to make shunning a criminal act or defund the religion because they practice this this act this um it's mandatory coercion of people who are trapped inside punishing their family members by never speaking to them again a kind of solitary confinement for the rest of their lives it's disgusting it causes all kinds of trauma religious trauma syndrome ptsd and it breaks up real family relationships forever destroys them it dismantles them entirely to their foundations people that should have unconditional love because of blood relationships or other deep relationships through upbringing being a sibling etc are destroyed by this practice that this religion forces their members to do and it got to the point that even in belgium this is my favorite piece of news on the topic in belgium a group of 10 or 12 people took the jehovah's witnesses to criminal court and it went to the supreme court of belgium and the jehovah's witnesses lost this court case and now they're considered a hate group in belgium and there's nothing different about them in belgium the way they act this is exactly the same scenario and her film is exactly about the practice and their punishments that come out of those judicial committees that create the exact scenario that people consider this religion a hate group for i believe and my hope is that in some years maybe it'll be a decade or two but this religion will be banned for this practice specifically this practice or they will have to change and reform and remove this practice shunning is a deep form of evil and it is exactly the specific thing that makes this group a cult and this film debutante is about that what leads up to the shunning my film witness underground is also deeply about the practice of shunning and how it destroys communities mine's just way more music oriented misfit underground punk music that's more like entertaining in a musical way where hers is entertaining in a drama way it's a beautiful drama i believe that is what i wanted to tell you you should go check it out support her go watch this film she's gonna make more films she's working on a bunch of other stuff already this is just one of many but it's her directing debut and it's beautifully done it's on vimeo right now and you can check it out camilladidina.com I'll put a link on my website on witnessunderground.com and I'm going to share it on our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash witnessunderground. There will be a link to see Debutante there. I'll post the trailer and a link to go watch the full film. It's worth it. Trust me. It's awesome. Good job, Camilla. Thanks everybody for paying attention. Take care. Very exciting news this week. Witness Underground is now available to watch. Patreon.com forward slash witnessunderground. Thanks again everybody for checking in. Witnessunderground.com. Check out the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash witness underground. Apply for the grant. We'll see you next time.